So as we told you, we sat down yesterday with Russell Brand, the comedian, actor, and now frankly kind of a public intellectual, for about an hour and a half on our show, Tucker Carlson, today. We want to share more of it tonight. In particular, Brand spent a lot of time thinking about and telling us about the COVID lockdowns. And the point of them was maybe the clearest explanation we have heard of what we've just lived through. Here it is. I think COVID provided a lens through which we could scrutinize yes. the machinery of power and how the intentions and agenda of power are able to play out, coalesce, and let's call it conspire when a crisis occurs. How a tendency, a globalist tendency to increase surveillance, a big tech appetite to capture data, and a comparable appetite within government converge, as the great American comedian George Carlin used to say, there is no need for conspiracy where interests converge. It seems that even if at its advent it was a legitimate crisis, and I certainly wouldn't make any contention around that, it was opportunistically handled in order to enhance regulation and control at a time where regulation and control are increasingly difficult to implement as people are more suspicious of institutional power. So in a sense, the best way to understand COVID, I believe, is to take COVID out of it and look at how the institutions, both corporate and government, behaved around it. How did they benefit? How did they utilize it? What narratives did they uh, disseminate and which narratives did they control and curtail? Even with the recent text messages from from our health minister at that time, Matt Hancock, you can explicitly see it was exploited. Oh no, we need to scare people. Is there any way high net worth individuals can get into the country? All these conversations that many people that are cynical about the behavior of the powerful believed were happening were indeed happening. The way that natural immunity was discussed proved to be true, i.e. that natural immunity is effective. They probably understood earlier than they admitted that natural immunity was effective and for reasons that, well, what, what could it be? Uh, what could be the reason that a monetizable solution to COVID was prioritized over a non-monetizable? Is there anyone involved in the situation that has a profit motive? Let's look at the data. And that, you know, so what, it, it was just revelatory, like the apocalypse always will be. The apocalypse is revelation of all, what was always there. Corruption, convergence of interests, alliances. This is not conspiratorial. This is the moot recital of economic interests and the ordinary movements of the powerful. If people can uh, honour one another and yes. talk to one another in good faith and recognise that anybody is, like, this whole debate between, like, that I've, that I've sort of felt a little bit around me even for coming here, I feel like it used to just be normal that someone in your family would be a conservative and someone in your family would be liberal and someone in your family would be socialist and someone in your family would be trans and someone in your family would be gay and different races are coming together. Yes. It's, this is part of who we are. And if it isn't part of who we are, it's certainly part of who we need to become. And it's something that we need to deeply, deeply encourage uh, immediately in the moment now. And you think that can be done? It's the only option. And therefore, it, it cannot be discussed. It must be implemented. Because the alternative we can see from the tendency towards geopolitical disaster, a set of centralized interests who seem to unconsciously be directing us towards nuclear Armageddon, if not yes. with Russia, then with China, they have to be interrupted. It simply has to, it simply has to happen. There is no choice. And in a situation where there's no choice, human ingenuity and our collegiate spirit must take over. We have no option but to find it in ourselves, to forgive one another, to move forwards, to love one another. Values that may seem a little hokey and old fashioned because they pertain to things that are ineffable and difficult to describe, but are vital and that we all understand. Well, that was pretty intense. Uh, definitely worth listening to. You can stream part one of our conversation right now. Part two comes out 7 a.m. on Fox Nation. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.